I, I, I understand the value of theory. That's how you start. But I believe application should be the parallel pathway alongside with theory. Otherwise, you will just become a person who knows theory a lot, who knows what means what. But when it comes to actually executing and making the product out of it, making an application out of it, there, are whole, there is a whole new level of challenges which you face when you actually start doing stuff. And then when I realized that, okay, it's not university's responsibility to teach you everything. They just give you a platform. It's your responsibility to take what you need from that platform and explore it on your own in a real world. Because anyways, university education doesn't update on a yearly basis. It's been outdated for so long. And in a technological world, things have been growing so rapidly and so fast. It's challenging for them to, you know, keep up with that. So it's, 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 it's on us. It's really on us how we want to make. Do you want to be a really good engineer or do you want to be just an engineer? Nice. First of all, nice to meet you, man. That's, oh, uh, thanks. that's fine. <laughs> that's nice. great, bro. So, you know, I, you know, actually I've been also busy these days since I was finishing my degree, bro, after so many years um, studying in mechatronic engineering, mm -hmm. I finally uh, did it. So thank God. I, I defend my thesis uh, on June 18. Okay. And yeah. I cannot now say that I'm yeah just on the path of now uh, being an engineer, a me mechatronic engineer, bro. I'm proud of it. Yeah, no, that's that's good. I've, I think we, when we talked last time, you did mention that you are doing mechatronics. So how was your experience so far? I mean... Well, you know, it was a, a long journey, you know, because uh, I was dealing with a UDP communication and all those things and, you know, trying to communicate, send data to the robot. And fortunately, I... I did it with the help of a, a friend also who helped me with that. So mm -hmm. we, you know, try, try to figure it out how to do it. But thank God we did it. And yeah, so the process was so long because I was trying with another communication, with the TCP communication. Mm -hmm. But since that communication wasn't bringing the best result, then at the end we figured it out with the UDP communication. We know we, we were using Coppelia SIM the simulation plat platform for robot and using the ESP 8266 to just work on with the ID on the Arduino. Yeah. But so far that's, that's it, bro. So now please let me know about your, your experience. I don't know how, how, how where is your solicitation or where, where is your, your strong skills? Uh, I mean, your robotics engineer, yeah. right? Yeah. So, I mean, so I did my bachelor's uh, in electronics and communication engineering. Uh, but before that also I did three year diploma in electronics engineering. So I have total like six years of um, kind of an academic background purely on electronics. Then afterwards for my master's, I came to UK for, um, for a master's degree in advanced robotics. So that's exactly what I just finished in January, like this year. Now in terms of specialization, like my specialization is mainly focusing on uh, artificial intelligence, but within that also, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of focusing more on computer vision uh, side of the robotics. As I was doing my masters, my research got a lot of attention, which is, purely focused on the bionic limbs, you know, the people who doesn't have, who don't have legs and arms. So I started working on that project, mostly from uh, software and the hardware side of it. So that project got a lot of attention and I ended up starting my own tech company here in uh, UK, I mean, in England. So, so I got like multiple scholarships from the universities, 
uh, I got selected in um, uh, the number one incubator, the number one university UK incubator globally. So I have been doing that since one and a half year now. So technically I'm doing like a startup um, and then uh, my uh, full-time job and like an academics research. So that's kind of my background. So, yeah. I don't know if you have some insights about the industrial part, how is it to work in the industry uh, compared in the research part? I don't know if you have some uh, grasp about it. Okay, so I didn't mention this before. So I am doing a full-time job and I am actually working in research and development department. So I'm a lead uh, artificial intelligence engineer in a multinational company. So I'm leading an entirely new project. What I've learned in last one year and eight months, because I started this as an internship while I was doing my master's. So now I'm doing it as a full-time. What I've realized or what I learned is research and development jobs are challenging but at the same time you get to learn a loads of stuff and i personally prefer that instead of doing the repetitive job you know uh, from nine to five so i i hate that to be honest i don't like nine to five repetitive job it needs to be something new you know something exciting and you get to explore a lot so i'm not sure what's the situation in colombia but as I'm from um, India, so I traveled to UK for my master's mainly because there are not many, uh, the thing which I wanted to do, like social robotics, artificial intelligence, more like cutting edge fields uh, in an R&D side of it. I was, I, I couldn't do over there because during my bachelor's, I felt like I exhausted all the resources already, right? Like I played around 20 robotics competitions, like national level uh, project competitions. I've won also uh, almost 90% of them. And I started feeling like, okay, I'm kind of, I'm, I felt like I'm, I'm stuck at one level. Like I was not able to access the little bit higher end side of robotics. That was my reason, <clears throat> so I traveled here. So in UK, or I think in US also, <clears throat> for sure, uh, the benefit of being in a developed countries, they're always working on cutting edge technology. So there's always new companies coming up. There's always new startups coming up, which startup is nothing but an R&D, research and development in the beginning days. Uh, so if you want to get involved in such companies, I would highly recommend you to get in touch with the, uh, you know, people through LinkedIn, you know, um, explain your interest uh, to them and see if they have anything. They might not have, I mean, they might not have a job for you, but having that network, having that surrounding, having that exposure always helps because you get to learn a lot. And as you are in your home now, you have internet connection, right? You can learn every single thing in home, to be honest. And I'm not joking about this. Even though I did my master's, but I can personally tell you that I did, I learned most of my things in this room. I have the entire setup here where I do my projects and all that stuff. And uh, wow. there's lots of resources available online. Uh, I, I genuinely feel that you can you don't need to go to university in 2020 to gain certain skill sets. I don't believe that. I think you can learn, as a matter of fact, you can learn more if you are just staying home and you can focus more. So, but I do understand the value of having exposure which university gives to students. Like I personally think that when I came to UK or this university, I was not aware that I'm, I will be starting a company. I was just doing my stuff, which I love to do, and everybody appreciated it. And they encouraged me to, okay, why don't you, this thing has a really good potential, let's do it. And that's the exposure, you know, which values the most. For that, definitely, university and other people matters a lot.
But from learning point of view, if you are a student in 2020, and if you're thinking that you will only rely on what university is teaching you, and if you go outside with only that limited knowledge, uh, I think that's not a good idea. You have to really put your time and energy personally other than university. You know, this is even related with the, the undergraduate situation. You know, like uh, from my side, I feel like university gives you some, uh, okay, it gives, okay, this is one thing here to investigate. This is one thing. This is, this. here we have this, you have this, but if you if you want to go deep, you have to do it for yourself, you know, you, yeah. as you said. In that university teach you this, you know, talk, that's something that you have to take actions to gain that knowledge and that perfectly can be done at, yeah. at home. And the benefits that university gives is just being able to interact and with, the, with people in with the same background and in the same interest, likes and these things. And yeah. No, I agree. I, I completely agree. And there is a logical reason behind it. And that's like you spend how many years you spent in university? Three years as a bachelor's, as an undergrad, right? You spent three years, right? To finish your well, actually I spent six years on my on my subject. In two years, almost two years, in my thesis. Oh That's wow! That's why okay. I sure. <laughs> it's yeah. a, long, a long time. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So that's that's what I'm saying. Like, typically, let's say a person spends three to four years. In this case, six years. But how many projects students do? Like we, when I have spent three years in my electronics engineering, I did one project each year, and that's ridiculous. I think that's just stupid. Why? Because you have 12 months and you are just doing one project in a year and you are an engineer. You should be able to do more projects. It doesn't matter, mini projects, mega project. You need to have more hands-on experience because at the end of the day, when you go in real world, you will be making things. And, and that's the reason I believe that when anybody's out of the university as a fresh, graduate what we as a student struggle is that we don't have hands-on experience and academics and universities makes us informative but just because you're informative about it doesn't mean you know how to do it i mean that's that's two different things it's simple like i've seen a circuit diagram in a book and when i saw the first time resistor or the transistor in the real world it doesn't look the same you know, transistor is represented as a symbolic value in a different way in a book. Uh, but when you take actual transistor in hand, it looks completely different. So what's, which terminal is what? How would you find that? You know, all those little, little tweaks makes a lot of difference. Uh, you know, differentiates you from a, just an engineer and a really good engineer. Because we're supposed to do stuff. We are here to do, you have to, we have to make and build. And if that's the major aspect, which I believe, at least in my personal experience, university lacks. And that's why having your own interest and passion and keep doing your hobby project, uh, it's, it's extremely important. That's what helped me uh, everywhere. Like when I was doing my masters, I, we had like 90 students in class, uh, like 90 students from all around the world. Hardly two students or three students from the batch got an internship, one internship. Uh, I've, I received the first internship and by the time I finished first internship, I applied for set, second internships uh, and I got selected in that too. So I ended up doing four internships. And when I look back and I realized like how and why did I get selected and why others didn't, then I realized it's all about the fancy degree can only get you into the interview. But after that, they didn't even ask me about my degree. They just asked me about how I, what I know, you know, can I do it? It's more like a technical side of it. So that makes the difference. And 
that's well yeah you know i can relate a lot with you because that that what was actually one thing why the reason why i took so you know so many time so many two years doing a thesis which typically that's the time normally a person spend here at least in my university I've, I've saw these people spending one and a half years but the thing is that when they engage in a project that's exactly the unique moment mm. that they have to put hands on you know it's yeah. not like you you know to be honest i've been involved in in, in robot projects like two twice yeah. or three times in mm -hmm. my whole career you know you know and that's actually the thing that you condense the knowledge you have and you know and that's what what is actually uh somebody asks me what is advice you give me in the first uh, semester of my university is it's just that man yeah. go ahead and do your project as fast as you can just try to the knowledge you have okay put it there in the robot put it there in the project that's the way and as you said that was actually that that were us from you know like what what do you know what what skills uh, are able to, what are skills you have uh, now that can be applied? Yeah, in, exactly. Wow. Application is, is really important. I, I, I understand the value of theory. That's how you start. But I believe application should be the parallel pathway alongside with theory. Otherwise, you will just become a person who knows theory a lot who knows what means what, but when it comes to actually executing and making the product out of it, making an application out of it, there, are whole, there is a whole new level of challenges which you face when you actually start doing stuff. So that's something which majority of the students, I believe, miss out. And that's why they, then, then they don't feel confident in interviews because the questions which they have been asked in interviews, they feel like, oh, I didn't even study this. What is this? You know, from where this thing is coming. And I've seen that in my friends. With, I've seen it firsthand when my friends used to go for an interview and they used to come back and they used to like be mad about the interview and the interviewer, like he was asking me some questions which I didn't even know. And then when I realized that, okay, it's not university's responsibility to teach you everything. They just give you a platform. It's your responsibility to take what you need from that platform and explore it on your own in a real world. Because anyways, university education doesn't update on a yearly basis. It's been outdated for so long. And in a technological world, things have been growing so rapidly and so fast it's challenging for them to, you know, keep up with that. So it's, 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 it's on us. It's really on us. How we want to make, do you want to be a really good engineer or do you want to be just an engineer? So it's simple. Wow. All right, man. Thank you so much for, for this interview. I really enjoyed. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. I, I wish you good luck with, uh, um with your projects and uh yeah don't uh, don't think too much about what you need just get started whatever the idea you have make a list of things you think use common sense in the beginning don't worry about too much technical stuff don't don't over complicate things if i have to start any project i just write down okay this is a thing and through my common sense even though i'm not an engineer for example i will write down things which i need and then it's like a high level version and then I go slowly into the deep and your process automatically will take you and lead you to the right things. So you don't have to know everything when you start. Nobody can know everything. I mean, when, when, when NASA put a Mars rover uh, into the outer space, right? Did, did Mars planet came with a rule book? No. Any, any new project, you know, any new ambitious project doesn't come with a rule book that, okay, you do this and you will achieve that. There is always challenges. So you just need to get started 
and automatically your challenges, your obstacles will allow you to explore different aspects of that project and that's how you end up finishing the project. Uh, because if you do overthinking, you will never start the project and starting is extremely important in engineering. Uh, what you think in here may not be the reality when you actually do that stuff. All right, bro. Appreciate it so much. I'm, yeah. I'm look, I look forward to have just another in a not too distant future about something perhaps that we can just uh, cooperate. Perhaps I'll be glad to do it, bro. So thank you so much. And yeah, that's, no that's yeah. it. It was nice talking to you and yeah, um, I hope it helped. And yeah, Definitely. good luck with the projects. Don't stop. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll see you around. I'll see you around. Bye.